got here. Wow, they like melt in your mouth. <laughs> it's Cajun cola candy. Lafayette. Did I just say that like a weirdo? No, you said it just right. Lafayette. You sound like you're from here. But we're not from around here. I know, I saw your haircut. <clears throat> Toby, where the hell are we going now? We're going to Pops. What's Pops? Pops is a po' boy place. What po kind boy? of po' boys? Lafayette po' boys. What makes a Lafayette po' boy? You're about to find out. So, Colin, are you from here? From here, born and raised. I was a pre-law, um, and within a week of getting a job at a law firm, I realized like, very quickly that it was not the direction I wanted to go. And so pretty quickly, I uh, switched gears, told my folks that I was gonna go to culinary school, and they thought I lost my mind. Should we unwrap some of these sandwiches? We had a lot of pool boy places in Lafayette, still do. But we sort of just wanted to put a little bit more of the flavors of Southern Louisiana in. We couldn't narrow it down. Our meatball po' boy here is called the Darlene. The only thing that's missing is a side of rice. Surf and turf. So I got like obsessed with making a sandwich that had roast beef and oysters that have horseradish bridge the gap. Oh it's so crazy. So this one is the Cajun Castro. Whoa. You have this like mass of juicy meat. It's out of this world. Okay, so you told us we were gonna save this one for last. What's going on here? There's something about like Cajun phonetics. If something's hot, it's hot. If it's really hot, it's hot, hot. So it's a cayenne based sauce, cayenne, brown sugar, some garlic, and some other stuff. And then it's mixed in with hog lard. I'm scared, but I'm also incredibly excited. <laughs> it's really hot, and the only thing that kind of fixes the heat is another bite. But yeah, that's, that's the sampling. Thank you so much for... Yeah, our pleasure. Glad you're here. This is a treat. This is incredible. It's like a full boy graveyard. Oh. <laughs> May they rest in peace. It's time for dessert. We're going to see Charles Poirier, who's uh, responsible for Poirier's small batch cane syrup. I think this is where he lives. Hey, Charles! Ah, oh, look, see? What's going on, Toby? What's up? Charles? How are you? How are you doing? Good. Hi. Julia? How you doing, nice Julia? Nice Charles? Hi. Emil. How you doing, Emil? <laughs> so how long have you been growing sugar cane? Uh, this will be 10 years I've been growing it. Yes. Started with, let me see, three 50-foot rows. And I was going to stop, and I was just going to do like a 10 or 15 foot row just to make a gallon for us. Mm -hmm. A gentleman by the name of Jim Gosson uh, calls me one day and said, I'll buy everything you make next year. And, and little did I know he was handing it out to chefs. And that, yeah, I think you lose some of the uh, shine when you try and get too big. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm not, mm -hmm. I can make it, probably make it grow some more, but I, I'm not, I might shy away from that a bit. Is there, is there any of it that we can taste? For sure. Whoa. That is crazy. It's just so much more complex than like the super refined sugars mm. that yes. we're all consuming all day. Well, thank you so much for showing us all of this. This is like welcome. This is thank really you. incredible. Oh, it's our pleasure. I appreciate that. <laughs> so <laughs> nice here. and calm here. <laughs> Did you not have a good time? Yeah, I mean, it was okay. <laughs> Toby! I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, it was a blast. I had a great time. <laughs>